You're listening to alltalkradio.net, Las Vegas, Nevada. Views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the hosts and guests, and not necessarily those of the staff or management of alltalkradio.net. What's going on, guys? All Talk Radio, and welcome to the Dante's Boxing Nation show. I am your host, Dante. We got a real good show for you guys today. First, let me go ahead and introduce my um, co-host. It's in the studio uh, with me tonight, or today, Mr. Noren Radical. What's going on, Noren Radical? Dante, what's up, kid? All right. And we have a real special guest for you guys on the phone. This man right here just uh, had a, pr- a terrific performance this past weekend, Mr. Mauricio Herrera. What's going on, Mr. Mauricio Herrera? Yeah, hey, we're good. Everything's going good over here. All right, man. All right, man. Thanks for joining the show, man. Really appreciate it. We're going to talk about everything with your career and, of course, this uh, great performance uh, you just had. Uh, I want to start off, uh, Mauricio, by, by asking you, man, um, before we even get into the, you know, the Garcia fight, how did you get started in the sport of boxing, man, to let everyone know? Well, it's, uh, as kids, you know, me, my my younger and older brother, uh, um, while other kids were playing baseball, getting into baseball and soccer and football, uh, maybe we had not go into that. Maybe my parents just, uh, my dad uh, just went to uh, the swap me, bought us some boxing gloves, and used to make my, me and my brother fight each other uh, in front of my uncles, and, and maybe they never came them, you know, and... Um, it caught on since then, you know, it caught on, and, and me and my younger brother stuck with him, my older brother not so much. Um, we went to the gym at 13, uh, was at a church, my first trainer there, you know, he was the guy who first taught me the jet and told me that was uh, the key to the boxing. And my brother, everything I did, and um, from there on, I didn't turn pro until, I mean, uh, amateur, until I was 18. So I was in the gym at 13, boxing and sparring, and and never turned amateur until I was 18. Uh, also, in the post, I was also a late bloomer. I didn't turn pro until I was 27. Um, uh, in my 20s, I had to eventually uh, leave my, my original trainer. I was loyal to him for many years, but uh, I wasn't going anywhere. You know, I didn't know what it was about, why he didn't get to the next level. Maybe he cut, it was too close to me and my brother and didn't want to see him get hurt, which you're going to get hurt in boxing. And um, me and my brother had left on our own and trained ourselves for a while in the garage at the parents' house. And just thinking one day we're going to go pro, but we didn't know how. And we just uh, stuck out for a few years training each other and, and uh, boxing the neighborhood. Kids. And I turned 27 and uh, people said, I will fall do it. Um, I knew in the back of my head I was going to go pro no matter what. I was going to do it. I don't know how I was going to do it or when. And at 27, I had my first fight, and the rest is history. Now, then I fought for a world title, and look where I'm at now. I, I <laughs> fought Danny Garcia. <clears throat> and did a great job. Uh, yeah, fantastic job. <laughs> you go ahead and take it away, Norm. No doubt, no doubt. Um, how you doing, Mauricio? It's Norm Radical here. Um, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up, bro? Um, that was a really great performance. I think you surprised a lot of people last Saturday night. They didn't, they didn't expect, um, they didn't expect the variety that you showed in that fight. Um, you came out, you came out boxing, uh, using the jab. Um, you know, you were upstairs, you were downstairs with them. You, you know, you were doing everything that pertains to the to the science of boxing, as I love to say. Um, give us, give us a little uh, insight. Um, for instance. What were some of the techniques that you utilized to uh, neutralize some of Danny's more notable weapons, such as his lethal left hook that we all know about? 
um, you know, he wasn't able to unfurl it with any, you know, great degree of, uh, you know, of, of, of success against you, you know, not, not like with, with past opponents. How'd you go about neutralizing some of Danny's weapons and, you know, uh, I think, mm -hmm. yeah, I think, you know, we work on, on a lot of things, uh, some of the things that uh, do naturally and some stuff we worked on, mm -hmm. uh, we knew he had a big left hook mm -hmm. and, we knew what to do. We were going to try to get in that table with him. He is a dangerous fighter. You know, he has a pretty good left hook. But I think um, keeping my controlling distance, you know, at times. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the feint, there was a lot, there was a lot of things, you know. You, you get a lot of things from him doing that left hook. You know, I think feints worked, you know. Absolutely. Uh, for me, a lot. The jab worked for me. I think uh, just my movement. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, you know, not throwing the right hand as much. It made him hesitant and hold back with that left. I figured if I threw more right hands, he'd he'd want to you know counter with left hooks. So me not doing it as much with the right hand early on, uh, kind of kept him on hold with that left hook. No doubt. You know, and, and not only that, he had problems with my jab. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean it was a great it was a great uh, game plan and executed uh, superbly. You know, and um, that's that's uh, obvious by by the uh, fan reaction. You know, there's a Absolutely. lot of yeah, there's a lot of people out there who who thought uh, you know, the wrong guy got his hand raised on Saturday night. Um, let me just let me just ask this as a follow up, um, because this is this is a, a conversation I have quite often. Uh, I see that there's a difference to me. For me, there's a difference between a robbery and a close decision with a lot of close rounds. You being, I mean, you you being the man in the ring, you know, you're the one who who, who did the fighting. How do you feel about the decision? Do you, I mean, do you feel, you know, sour as if you, you did get robbed? Or do you feel like, you know, it was just a close fight with a lot of close rounds? And, you know, obviously you proved your merit. And, um, you know, you, you, if you're willing to mix it up again. But how do, you, how do you feel about the decision itself? Do you feel like, you know, it was highway? Or do you feel that, you know, you, you can understand it, it going in Danny's favor, being that he's the champion? No, 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 no. You know, I thought I was shit. You know, um, mm. uh, in the ring, uh, I was fine, Danny. Uh, mm. Not to sound cocky, but I felt fairly easy. I mean, nice. uh, okay. putting work in with Danny, I had, I had no difficulties with him, and, and it was almost unreal in there. I was just, just this is my time, and I'm, I'm pulling this off. You know, and and just staying smart in there, and round by winning, round by round, yeah. and then uh, you know, I was taking more towards the end, just to seal. As much as I can, I mean, uh, back in my mind, it, it is Puerto Rico, and anything can happen. You know, mm -hmm. they can mm -hmm. can't give it to him. But um, I was not going to get reckless, you know, just because of that, and 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 go entangle with them, and then do what would happen with Amir Khan. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to still stay smart. Mm -hmm. So I try to fight as smart as I can without tangling and getting you know hit with, with big left hook, uh, and enough to, enough to win the fight, which I thought I did. You know, and. I did everything in every round. I thought I showed boxing skills. I, he, I pressured him when I wanted to. I thought I'd be you know, in, in every way or every way. Uh, I saw his, you can see his face and his body language. He, mm -hmm. he was confused uh, all rounds and throughout the whole fight. I mean, I thought it was my game. I'm the one who pushed the fight. I uh, was initiating everything. So I didn't understand that, you know, but um, I felt I won, but... You know, I still didn't know how the judges were gonna. You wish you, you never went, went not do that and score it that way, uh, and give him, you know, the fight. But because uh, you know it's Puerto Rico, but I felt I felt good. Cause I felt that I won it. I felt that people saw it, and people on the road they saw what I did. So um, that's that shows. Mm. Hey, let me just just follow up one more time. Go ahead, go ahead, man. Have, have you have you watched the fight? I'm, I'm assuming that you've obviously watched the fight since Saturday. That right? was my next question. Go I know. Right, come on, bro. <laughs> hey, go ahead. How long have we been doing? This? <laughs> All right. Bobby, Mauricio, you watched the fight? Yeah, I watched the fight. I watched the fight. I think I beat him even even worse when I watched it. <laughs> you know, it just so, gets better and better every time. How many times? How many times did you watch it though? I saw it already like six times. Oh, know? wow. I can watch it all day, you know. It just, um, <laughs> so, but then I can watch it and it kind of makes me mad and angry, you know. Yeah. Come on, so, you know. So, so we, we know. Uh, it was we, pissed off, you know. Yeah, I yeah. could just see it in his face and his dad's face. And you could see that I took the whole crowd, you know, out of that fight. 
Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, we know what grade you gave yourself. <laughs> you gave yourself a pretty high grade. But your job, Mauricio, is to fight, not to judge. But if you were judging it, what would you score it by round? Good question. The round, uh, rounds that I win? Yeah, now how many, you know, round, how I, many I rounds? I think I won, I won most rounds. I only give them, like, uh, probably three or four rounds. Okay, eight, four. You know, I thought uh, I won most of the rounds. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know how many, many rounds. You know, a lot of shots, when you, you watch it with, I watch it with the sound off. You, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of shots just uh, missed and, and mm -hmm. things from the arms. And the crowd was going crazy. You know, that influenced the judges, but... You can see him when they do highlights on Danny Garcia. There's no highlights. There's no highlights <laughs> that can't me. I mean, they have they have a whole story on him at the end, and and you know with that coming home song, which I'm sick of already. But um, it 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 tries to show highlights of Danny punching me, and I don't see any. You know, there's any there. Yeah, you're gonna I don't remember. I don't even remember by any one left hook. Uh, there was not really times landed by him, you know. So I don't know where all the power punches came that they had the numbers, you know. Hey, you gonna be mad at me if I if I break into that song? I'm coming, <laughs> coming home. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hate I that song. Know. I hate that song too. That uh, song was you know, already know. Uh, Everywhere was all over Puerto Rico. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but hey, man, it was it was a great fight and a great performance. Dante, what's up, bro? Absolutely. Let me ask you this, uh, Mauricio, uh, since um, you know. If you were to have a rematch with him, because you said you watched the fight about six times already, just looking at the fight, I know you've seen certain things, you've seen certain extra openings that you probably could have, you know, um, capitalized off of. Did you basically say, man, if I were to fight him again, I'll do this and I'll do that different? Yeah, if I was to fight him again, I, you know what, I think I'd, it'd be even easier. You know, when I was in there, it was fairly easy, but I was just a little cautious, you know, still, th you know, it was almost unbelievable. I thought, is this, is this what this guy got? Is this all he got to? Or is he holding back for something, you know? So I was always had that, you know, I was cautious, you know, just still trying to stay smart. And by the end, you know, I seen that it was all he had, and he was getting tired, and I turned it up a little more towards the end. You know, and in the rematch, uh, I, I now I know exactly what he has, and he can train me harder, and, and I think it'd come out the same way. You know, if he says he didn't train for this fight, um, mm -hmm. he knew the five months before he was going to fight around this date. You know, I found out, and I only had eight weeks when they told me to this time. I took advantage of the those weeks and trained my ass off. And, uh, you know, all the talk he was making, that he was 100% ready and, and the weight was on point. He can fight in a week if he wanted to, and he'd be good to go. And, um, uh, then they, that he was going to stay at 140, and then after the fight, he he's very much the opposite. He got all the excuses came out, you know. Yeah. But um, that happened again. I want to rematch. Let him ready again, and and it'll be the same way. Cause yeah. it's my timing, my rhythm. That's not going to change. That he's not going to be able to figure out. So to me, I don't matter how hard he turns, you know. Yeah, I I, I know this is um. I'm, I just want to ask you this question. I know it probably sounds crazy, but do you were you kind of surprised that you did a better job against Danny Garcia than Lucas Matisse could? Yeah, yeah. Uh, was, uh, you know, I have fought Lucas Matisse, you know, for the, when he was um, getting ready for Danny Garcia. Okay. But um, but but Lucas Matisse was uh, doing better things in barn, you know, and that I didn't see him do in the fight with you know with Garcia, and. Um, but then again, I, the way the, the way uh, Batista approached Danny, he never he just kind of uh, rushed in, you know. He never used the jab or feint or back that time. So uh, when I was when I see myself now against Danny, you know, uh, I see I see I did uh, uh, different things than what he did. Yeah, and I think it was um, your jab that kind of separated your performance from uh, Lucas Matisse's performance. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, oh yeah, exactly. It was this jab too, you know. Uh, walk, I mean, you can't let somebody just walk in in on you. You know, you have uh, in your range. You know, if you stick up a jab, they don't come in. You know, you faint with the jab. You the jab is the closest thing to hitting the guy in the right hand, a hook or an uppercut. That's mm -hmm. the fastest and quickest way to get to your opponent. You know, I'm surprised a lot of fighters don't don't use that punch. You know. Hopefully now, you know, they see me and see uh, that I wear the jab. Hope the jab comes back because. They both fight it all the time. I mean, that's like the main punch in boxing. I don't the main, it is the main uh, anymore. The only one I see you can leave it is Paul and um, and that's it. I mean, 
if more fighters use the jab, it could be this. It could be there's like could be a lot of mismatches out there. Mm. Yeah. yeah, certainly is the primary uh, punch in boxing. I mean, 